fighting flesh and blood. Well, I'ma dress it up. The good life ain't gonna get you in, so don't press your luck. He's a just God, him alone, just God. Just ride with me where I'm going. You can't use your bus card. Gotta have a word in you. Satan trying to murder you. Forget about your real estate and driving your convertible. Stock market up and down. Dow Jones ain't your friend. The bailout can't bail you out, and I won't pretend. I'm a man of Christ. I just handle life and play it cool and watch him set the stage for the Antichrist. See, I'm a hey, Christian what's up, man. Y'all? This I'm is not your boy, Curtis, and now you see TV. Drugs, always into drugs. The Lord began to speak to me about preaching. Uh, lying constantly to people about different things. I wanted to get revenge on that night, and I put him out. Used to do, you know, a lot, quite a bit of criminal activity, breaking houses, steel. And he took his gun out and shot the guy. The answer right here. You know, God's God for us. These three symbols represent the Masonic apron, which when I was given my grandfather's Masonic apron, it had three solar bursts on it because they have a, what you would call a um, counterfeit to the triunion Godhead. And then the clasp that held this apron, which you see in the top corner, is the Illuminati symbol of the serpent eating its tail, that ye shall not surely die, but ye shall be as God. So I had the three solar bursts, and then the clasp which closed it, and then below is my family's crest, which actually sits on the Vatican floor, because I'm a descendant of Pope Clement of over 700 years ago. That's how far back my family's been caught up in this bloodline of secret societies. And so that's why I was being groomed for what's coming. So this is where I was. This is the life that I grew up and understood. But it wasn't until I read the Bible in Deuteronomy in chapter 18 where God said that these are an abomination. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. They shall not be found among you anyone who maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire. That's a Masonic ritual. Or use divination, which we know is fortune telling, or observer of times, astrologer, or an enchanter, a witch, or a charmer, a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, a necromancer, one that conjures up spirits. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God drove them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. So here I was at the tipping point in my life. I'm on upstate New York. I'm in my, this camp that I bought from a friend of my father's. I'm, I'm trying to quit my career at IBM, making hundreds of thousands of dollars, rubbing elbows with very prestigious people offered to be a part of these elite groups. And I'm wrestling with this and wrestling with this. And where I'm standing on the back of the house, there was a, a lake and the river that came down where the lake joined. And right across it was the intelligence center for the state police barracks and the Depar Department of Environmental Conservation Forest Rangers, which actually have more authority than the state police in the states. And, I, and it's about midnight, and I see all this activity going on, and so I go and grab a pair of binoculars, and I look out, and here are all these guys. Full regalia, Masonic aprons on, and I'm like, Lord, what have I got myself into? And so I'm standing there on the deck, and I'm panning. And all of a sudden, I stop. And I'm looking, and there's a pair of crosshairs looking down my scope. I'm looking into his scope, and he's got a rifle pointed at my head. So I wave, and he nods back at me. And I, I drop to my knees. I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. What am I to do? This is in the middle of nowhere. And it's a dark, dark county, completely under their control. And I realize they're not, they're not on the other side of the lake anymore. Well, they're coming around. 
They're coming for me. And I'm praying, Lord, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? This, this is it. And small, still voice, Mark, take your shoes and socks off and go outside and tell them you belong to me. Okay, Lord. Okay. So I took off my shoes. I took off my socks. I jumped off the back of the deck. I'm walking out into the woods. The next thing I'm standing in front of this thing, 20 feet tall, in front of me. The God of the dead, the Lord of the underworld, Anubis. And next to him, he's stacking souls wrapped in gunny sack with their eyes cut out, tied up, wiggling. And he's talking to me, saying, I've already got your soul, Mark. And next thing I know is I look at him and I say, you can have my body, but you can't have my soul. I've given it to the Lord. This thing vanishes. These men around me are all backing away. And then this small, still voice says, Mark, go inside. This is not your battle. So I go inside, went to bed, got up the next morning, went into town, saw some of the men in the diner, asking me how I slept that night. I said, I slept great. Thank you very much. Got a phone call from my oldest friend, my father. And he said, if you get out from behind his shadow, you'll end up with a bullet in your head. I'm telling you as your father, we can't touch you. Don't get out from behind a shadow. <laughs>